Tonight, a very special Don't Trash Our Treasure. We're celebrating the 75th anniversary of Everglades National Park. Recently, a small crew of students, explorers, and scientists recreated a famous expedition that happened here 125 years ago. But this was no sightseeing tour. This was research to witness and document how this most important natural resource has been impacted by human activity over time. Local 10 environmental advocate Louis Aguirre has the story. Just days before Halloween, a team of four Florida explorers and scientists set off on an arduous trek that no one had accomplished since 1897, when American adventurer Hugh Willoughby became the first non-indigenous person to canoe across the Everglades, map it, and collect scientific data along the way. And his uh, water analysis uh, provides all of us the baseline water chemistry of the Florida Everglades that everyone has relied on for more than a century. Here we are at the mouth of the Harney. The team set out to retrace the exact route of the original expedition, launching their canoes from the mouth of the Gulf of Mexico and up the Harney River, just like Willoughby. Oh no, we're going right. Navigating the maze of thick mangroves became their first challenge. Like I said, there was lots of ways to go, but only one of them was right. And the experience um, was amazing and exhausting. Tracy Baker is an associate professor in the Environmental Global Health Department at the University of Florida. So I'm just taking the water quality parameters, so temperature, pH, salinity. It was her task to collect the identical water chemistry samples Willoughby had, but was also looking for contaminants not present back then. Pesticides, pharmaceuticals, forever chemicals, microplastics. You know, we saw so much plastic, single-use plastic just floating um, in the river. We found balloons out in the Everglades, like in the most remote areas. One day we found six balloons. It is not the same Everglades. Less than half of the original ecosystem remains. Over the past hundred years, humans have sliced and diced it, drained vast acres, diverting its natural flow to make room for agriculture and development. We literally cut the kidneys out of the state of Florida and we wonder why we have uh, dirty water and insufficient water, and it's us. We're out of the mangroves, and now we're in the grass. The team spent the next three days paddling through thick, razor-sharp sawgrass, setting up camp along the way to sleep and eat as they traveled east-northeast, looking for airboat trails that would lighten their resistance. By day five, the historical Everglades were long gone, paved over and built upon, the crew leaving the slough for the Tamiami Canal that flowed right by the campus of Belen Jesuit Prep School, where they got a hot meal, slept in the classroom, and picked up some academic hitchhikers. Students from an environmental program at Belen Jesuit uh, decided to paddle with us for the last three days. The crew from Belen. Advisor and chemistry teacher Maria Vilberg joined the five students, all thanks to team navigator Charlie Arizoza, a Belen alumnus. Unfortunately, we weren't able to take them deep, deep, deep into the glades, but we were able to show them the entire canal system from the school out to the bay. It was a hands-on crash course in conservation. As they paddled, the Belen students absorbed the history of the Everglades, learned about Willoughby. Throw it down hard. And how to take water samples and collect data. The canals, the Blue Lagoon Lakes, and the Miami River became their classroom. We're going to probably find that we're more polluted now than 125 years ago and just complete disregard of our environment. And it's been important to me because we've been able to analyze the effects of our actions and how, and hopefully be able to correct them with the data we gathered. After seven days and 130 miles, the expedition finally came to an end right where Willoughby's did, Biscayne Bay by what is now Bayside Marketplace. The words of Everglades champion Marjorie Stoneman Douglas, nevermore hauntingly accurate. The Everglades is a test. If we pass it, we may get to keep the planet. So it's not all doom and gloom. We've obviously had a lot of adverse impacts, but I think we've learned a lot and we're doing a lot to correct our past mistakes. It's a test we all have to pass. The results of all that data that was collected is not yet known. That data is still being processed right now. We'll be sure and share that with you once it's published. But the one takeaway we can confidently share right now is that those Belen students walked away forever impacted by what they experienced and have become 100% committed to the urgent mission to protect and restore our Everglades.